from around the globe. It's The Cube with digital coverage of Next Level Network Experience event. Brought to you by Infoblox. Hello everyone, welcome back to The Cube's coverage. We're here in our Palo Alto studios. I'm John Furrier, host of The Cube. We're here with Infoblox for their Next Level Networking virtual event with theCUBE. Glenn Sullivan is our guest, Principal Product Manager with Infoblox, formerly with, formerly with SnapRoute, CUBE alumni. Great to have you back on, Glenn. Great to see you and uh, thanks for jumping on remotely. We're doing the remote thing, the remote CUBE. Good to see you. Yeah, it's great. I, I wish I could be in the studio. You guys have a great studio up there in Palo Alto, so I wish I could have joined you, but uh, well, that's not possible right now. <laughs> the governor's on, is off, we'll, we're going to get there. But when it does come back, we'll certainly do a lot more remotes and when it go to a hybrid world. Hybrid, sounds like it, the, the media business is turning into a cloud computing. You got public videos in person, you got hybrid and virtual. The cloud native world is certainly uh, spawning everywhere now with, the, with COVID. And you guys are talking about next level networking, but with the word experience. I want to get your thoughts on that because you know, it's been six months you've been on theCUBE, a lot's happened. Next level networking experience, describe it. Yeah, it's really about processing things as close to where they need to be processed as possible, right? So you, you don't really want to put everything in the cloud. You don't really want to have everything happen on-prem. You want to do the right data processing where it's needed, right? Have, have a little bit uh, on-prem and have a lot in the cloud or vice versa. It's really about elastic scale. Right, that's what I think about with cloud native technologies is is being able to run whatever you need to run service wise as close to the delivery mechanism of, of either the user or you know as close to the app in the cloud as you need to. That's really what it means by uh, you know having elastic scale, and and we try to do that every day. And notice the word experience is in there. You know that's been super important because the ability to provision manage these services from the customer standpoint. I mean, I can't drive in, there's no space, <laughs> the data center's closed. I go, oh, I got to go in. I now can do it remotely. This is the key about having abstraction layer innovation, certainly DNS, DHCP, IP address management, never going away. You got to connect stuff to the internet. I mean, the network is there. You got to make <laughs> exactly. it more innovative. What's your thoughts on, on the impact of the network now, the cloud native and open source specifically are driving more action? Well, there's a lot going on under the, under the hood, right? And you can't just, you know, manage things the way you used to be, you know, able to where you take and you buy a box and you, you know, it's that cattle versus pets thing that we talk about in cloud native, right? Where you, you, you know, treat this appliance very specifically and very specially and you upgrade it and you're afraid to touch it. Now that you can't, you know, get the things, you have to do everything lights out. So what we learned for, by applying technologies in the cloud, you know, you didn't go into AWS's data center or Google's data center or Microsoft Azure's data center and manage these things. So what we've learned about how to manage infrastructure across the board in, you know, in networking and compute and storage now is even more important because everybody's lights out all the time now. And scale and speed is critical. I mean, Google's pioneered the concept of SRE, Site Reliability Engineer. What you're teasing out, Glenn, is same kind of concept for the network. You got to have the security, you got to have the scale. This is a huge point. Can you react to that? Yeah, it's, it's about spinning up instances where you need them, you know, when you need them, right? If, if the thing, if, if networking equals a physical black box appliance that you you know, specifically nurture and, and manage instead of just networking services, right? Because DHCP is a networking service. DNS is a networking service. IPAM is a networking service. So you should be able to spin those up wherever you need to and manage those without having to worry about it all being tied to, you know, uh, specific things that you have to you know, manage, you know, in a, in a very nurtured way. I want to get your thoughts, the term borderless enterprises being kicked around. You guys use that term. I've heard, you know, the borderless network. I mean, it makes sense, I guess, but what does the borderless enterprise mean to you? Well, it's, it's really just an extension. If you think about it from, you know, the software defined perimeter concept before, you know, people call, you know, it different terms now, but it's just saying that borderless means that I don't, have people sitting in a in an office anymore and if i do have people sitting in an office they have the similar experience to people that are connecting remotely no matter where they are so because there is no boundary to your network right because there's no 
because the the edges of your network don't ma ma you know match edges of your walls in your branches that's pretty borderless to me right and and you have to you have to kind of think about you know it's not just about adding more firewalls it's not just about adding more you know network perimeter security it's really about how do i apply foundational security across the board and you know what what i've you know, I've been at Infoblox now for for you know a little over six months, uh, and I can tell you, it's it's great to see, you know, thinking about these foundational services, right? These infrastructure services like DHCP, DNS, and IPEM being really at the foundational layer of the security that you apply to your network, right? It's it's the first couple of things that happen, right? The first thing you do is you get an IP address. That's DHCP. You can figure out all kinds of stuff about a device that way. Then you start looking up services with DNS, right? And then it's like, okay, well, now I've got a lot more information about what the user's doing, where they're going, and, and how to secure it, right? So these are these are these sound like they're you know really, uh, you know, your plain vanilla protocol suites until you know you really start applying borderless security across the board with them. Yeah, a lot of machinations, and also you now have. Uh, massive amounts of connection points because with IoT, not only you have more in terms of volume of things connecting, but they're being turned on and off very quickly. They have to get it. They have to, you know, get connected. So you have that going yep. on. Yep. And then you got to make sure, you know, that they that they do what they're supposed to do, right? If they're supposed to phone home to a specific place, that they only do that, and that they haven't been hijacked and. Somebody isn't, you know, mimicking them with malware. There's, there's all kinds of security threats when you start thinking about all the possibilities that IoT brings into, into account. Yeah. Oh, some, some light bulb that you screw in, Wi-Fi enabled, has a multi-threaded capability, and be, who knows what's on there, right? I mean, this is what the reality is. No one knows what's connected. So a little hygiene comes a long way. Um, I want to just get back into what you said. You've been there for a few months. You came from Snap Route, which was doing some real pioneer. Mm -hmm. That's where well, we did a, a feature interview on you and what you were doing there with that technology. With Borderless Enterprise, what is the role that cloud native and open source play? Because this is your wheelhouse. I want to get your thoughts because that, when you add that to borderless, things kind of happen. There's two, there's two things that I like to think about. One, it's scaling things down as skinny as possible uh, or as big as, as necessary, right? Elastic scale, right? We talk about uh, you know, cloud, native, cloud native technologies. We always talk about elastic scale. Well, what does that mean? Well, that means that Am I securing an entire data center? Am I securing a branch office? Am I securing a gas station? Or am I securing a, you know, a person working from home? You know, this is what we mean by elastic, elastic scale. It doesn't mean that I'm, you know, purpose building bespoke specific security profiles for those individual use cases. It means that I have a I have a system that I can scale up and scale down no matter where those folks are, right? That's really what you have to do when you think about cloud native technologies and the borderless network is is you have to be able to run things as close to the user as possible or as close to the app as possible or somewhere in between. The second thing that I think is super key is abstraction, right? You can't manage, you know, everyone working from home. Uh, or you can't manage as many instances as you need with, you know, everyone's individual laptop, right? This doesn't this doesn't scale, right? Abstraction is key to cloud native technologies because it means that I don't pay attention to anything that's below me, right? If I'm a if I'm an SRE, I don't I don't necessarily care about what type of servers that application sets running on. If I'm a network engineer, I don't really care about the fiber plant patch panels that connect my network devices together, right? It, abstracting away the underlying infrastructure is key for cloud native technologies. So as we add more and more devices, more and more endpoints, more and more users to manage, we have to make sure that we abstract away the complexity of you know, all the connections that need to be built between those users and whatever you know, abstraction orchestration layer that we utilize. And so you almost, you almost peel back the onion from the early days of DNS and go to the core. Hey, I want to connect to this domain and packet moves from here to there across an IP address. Oh, let's add some abstraction on it. This has been the innovation formula for the internet for years, right? So how do you describe the next level? Because you mentioned, again, the word experience is in there. So next level means, okay, networks need to be programmable. You do have next level open source dynamic that you pointed out beautifully. 
what's that next level experience? Uh, how, how do you see the preferred future evolving? Because if you take this further, if you believe cloud native provides some scale, as you pointed out, it should simplify these abstraction layers, it should reduce complexity or, or abstract away the complexity, complexities and provide more simplicity. Absolutely. I mean, I, I always come at it from an ops perspective because that's just my background, right? I, I, I was running networks for a long time before I started building, you know, network operating systems, right? I, I can tell you that what I need is visibility. Uh, you know, I need to be able to see what's going on at any given moment. I need to be able to, to you know, know that the things that I've deployed are, are up and running. I need to know that um, the information that I need to troubleshoot that, the, the issues that are, you know, arise is at my fingertips, right? Because I always think about it like the 3 a.m. call, right? The, the network engineer or, you know, sysadmin or the DNS admin, or it doesn't matter who they are. At 3 a.m., they got to wake up because they've just been paged and something's wrong. How do they get to the, the what's you know, what's broken. So that's one way to think about it. There's also the deployment way to think about it, right? Like, how can I deploy as many new, you know, users, as many new branches, as many new locations, whatever the the process is, you know, you hear zero touch provisioning, you hear all these other, these 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 features and, and they come, you know, as part of a cloud native mentality, right? They, they, they mean that I don't have to do you know, a whole lot of pre-thinking and pre-staging and, and pre-configuration and pre-thought before I deploy stuff, right? It means I need something, I, I, I deploy, you know, whatever is required from a service level, I kickstart it, it bootstraps itself and it joins, right? I, I take away the headache of, of having to think about where something is or when it is. And um, that's, a lot of, that's a lot of the synergy that we had between what we were doing at SnapRoute and when we came to Infoblox, right? It was, I, I can tell you we were we were pleasantly surprised by the platform that was built and we were like, okay, well this is this is gonna be great. We can we can add services to this and we don't have to worry about having to go and reinvent the 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 wheel because when you choose technologies like you know Docker containerization and you choose technologies like Kubernetes orchestration and Kubernetes abstraction, um, you, you you are a lot closer to where you need to be. I mean, one of the things that um, you know isn't super well known out there is that uh, core DNS is one of the major projects that Infoblox helps maintain with inside of CNCF, the Cloud Native Compute Foundation, right? Core DNS ships at the core of every Kubernetes version from now on, uh, you know, as of a few versions ago. So if you think about it, you know, Infoblox has got a lot of cloud native technologies built into everything that we do. And we're one of the key maintainers of one of the key DNS features of something that's at the heart of Kubernetes. And, you know, I don't have to tell you how popular Kubernetes is. Yeah, and we've chatted about that. It sounds like it's the kernel of all the action, DNS, the core DNS <laughs> for Kubernetes. <laughs> exactly, exactly. It's definitely at the core there. Glenn, I want to get your thoughts. You First of all, I love chatting with you. You mentioned your operating background, but also you could bring a lot of dev, dev into it too. So this is ultimately to me, the inflection point of where DevOps goes mainstream because you're, you used to do uh, ops for a fruit company. Um, Apple, <laughs> yes, yes, big one. Very popular. Very fruit popular company, fruit yes. company called Apple. And we know how hardcore they are. Actually, they lean heavily on, you know, lock it down, make sure everything's secure. I mean, it's well known in Silicon Valley and around the world, certainly in tech circles, the security um, mindset. Mm -hmm. High, uh, large scale operations. Now you bring that also the DevOps aspect of it with cloud native. As that world has to become secure and networks it's an ops game, let's face it. No matter how much DevOps you'd sprinkle into the equation, at the end of the day, it's ops. Ops, operations of networks, high availability, large scale. But now you have a little mm -hmm. bit of development going on on top. The programmable internet has to get to the network layer. What's your take on that? Because you still need security. You want to have the capability to do some advanced automation. These mm -hmm. are hot new trends and networking people are now he hearing this not for the first time, but it's the new thing where it's like, okay, I can have my ops, but I got to do some mm -hmm. dev now. So what makes sense of this? Where are we in this whole programmable networking aspect? Yeah, there's there's sort of two schools of thought and it's interesting what's, what's happening, right? You've got kind of on the extreme left side, you've got, I just treat the network like it's dumb plumbing and I run all of my software, uh, you know, overlays on top of it. And I basically treat the network like it doesn't exist. And, you know, I, I, 
it's it's kind of a situation that's been you know perpetuated by the silos that are out there where you have the network the network engineers and the and the server compute engineers or SREs and then you know it's like well the, these these folks never have to talk to each other because we just treat the network like it doesn't exist and we run you know overlays on top and some of the vendors you know in the in the you know server overlay security space have been really proud of that interaction and I could tell you that that's one way of doing it but it's it's not the it's not the optimal way, right? Like when I was a network engineer, I could tell you, you know, it, it's it's you're trying to build credibility, right? So if you, if I was talking to a network engineer now and I'd say like, what do you want? How do you get your credibility built with your server folks? It's it's kind of like learning a different language, right? If you try, if you try to speak the other language, the the person actually is appreciative of that and will help you. So I always found, you know. Find things you can automate. Run that run that code base. You know, figure out the API structures. Build some pseudo code together to make it happen, and and figure out what you're doing over and over and over again, and automate it, automate away, right? And that's 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 some of the nice things that you know are, are the same here, right? I, I, everything we could ever want to do in any GUI is is all you know REST API underneath the hood, right? So it's like we don't have to you know pitch to people that oh you can you can automate this code if you want to, you can run these APIs if you want to. Um, they know it and they use it and, and people are happy with it. And I think if you're a network engineer, you've got to just, you've got to spend the extra effort to try to, you know, you don't have to do anything complicated. You know, it's not, not like you got to go write C. Yeah, it's, I'm sorry? It's not rocket science. No, start start with Ansible. <laughs> You'll learn some Python. You'll learn some Django on top of that. And then keep keep running, right? Keep automating on top of that. All right, great stuff, Glenn. I know you got a tight deadline. Appreciate you coming on for this virtual fireside chat as part of the InfoBlocks Next Level Networking Virtual Event. Um, what specifically can companies do to get what they need from a technology standpoint to secure the borderless enterprise? How do you see it playing out now that you're on the InfoBlocks side from Snap Route with what InfoBlocks has, which is a holistic portfolio approach, a holistic view? What are you guys offering customers and how do they secure their borderless enterprise? Really, really start with uh, DDI, right? I know DDI is something that is not specific to InfoBlox, but if you look at what we're doing with DNS, DHCP and IPAM, it's really the foundational layer to start securing uh, the rest of your network. We don't, we don't necessarily, you know, make it so you don't need the rest of your security stacks that are running on top, but we do optimize them and we make it so you can right size them. And we really think that if you focus on getting that layer solid um, and you really focus on the DNS security, you can you can apply a lot of lightweight, high impact uh, features as early on in the packet forwarding process as possible, right? If you think about, I, I'm an network engineer at heart, so I always think about the path of the packet from the start to the end and DDI happens really early in the process. So if you get that right, the rest of your uh, security infrastructure built on top of that is just going to work that much better. You're the principal product manager at Infoblox, formerly with SnapRow. How do you fit into this? What product are you managing? Uh, can you give a little bit of background on kind of what you're working on? So I'm an emerging technologies PM. So basically anything kind of new and cool that we, we look to add to our platform, um, it'll come out of uh, myself and my group. And Kubernetes obviously is one of them. Well, Kubernetes is already there. Uh, so we're already doing stuff with Kubernetes inside of Infoblox. Like our whole platform, if you buy Blox1 DDI and Blox1 Threat Defense today, it's all deployed using Kubernetes and Docker containers and orchestration layers and everything today. So everything that we're building uh, on, on my team uh, is all building on top of that well solid platform that's already been developed. There's definitely demand out there. You're starting to see the big companies like VMware, very operational focused company start acquiring um, cloud native and open source kind of a new you know, kind of section for them. Obviously it's a tell sign, the markers are all there in terms of the trends. Um, what are people missing? What are, what's real, what's, what's vapor, what's reality? When you look at the landscape and what does Infoblox uh, bring to the table? So I think what's important to know is that when you're looking at open source technologies, a lot of them have been hardened over many years. And there's new stuff coming out all the time and there's definitely you know, new uses for them. Um, but what's kind of important is what you put on top, right? Everyone's got open source under the hood or they've got technologies they've OEM'd under, under the hood, right? But the experience that you present to customers is really key, right? Because 
you can take any kind of open source project and wrap a you know very thin layer on top of it and you can either you know trump up the open source topics and say this is this is the open source software we use underneath or you can you know downplay it and say hey this open source software you know we don't really talk about what's under the hood and and it just all works magically we find that transparency is really helpful um you know you let people know what's under the hood and you contribute to it and you show that you're involved in this community and you use that as a as a leverage to kind of push forward so if you if you look at you know what we're doing with uh, some of the different projects within you know Bloxman DDI uses Kia and it's you know we're we're part of ISC that's part of the maintainers of that like we're we're openly in this space right and and I already mentioned Cordy and us before right so you can either take open source and use it and pretend that you don't or you can take open source and contribute to it and be a community member and be an advocate and usually when you're on that side of the of the equation you end up in a, a better place you know with your customers building you know building uh confidence in your customer base that's great stuff glenn sullivan thanks for coming on i really appreciate it. i'll give you the last word in a nutshell if i have cloud native and open source how do i secure my my borderless enterprise think about it as close to where the source is as possible and scale things elastically so that you can do as much processing of uh, the user experience as possible so that you aren't trying to, you know, funnel everything to a single place and apply some, you know, magical policies in a, in a single centralized location to where you have to process a lot of data uh, across the board. If you put, if you think about it from a hybrid approach, where you've got a little bit on-prem and you've got some a little bit in the cloud or in some combination that's right for your organization. Uh, the hybrid approach that really trumps the local survivability and really you know keeps focus on put it, securing things as close to the user as possible or as close to the source as possible, then you're going to be in good shape. Glenn, great stuff as always, a master class in networking. Appreciate the, the insights. Thanks for coming on this Infoblox Next Level Networking Virtual Event for theCUBE. I'm John Furrier, your host. Stay with us and thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.